Hi everybody, you are watching tutorials. My name is Alex and today we're gonna build this infographic template in Adobe Illustrator. We will gonna start with a simple circle and then create this wavy continuous line and uh, assign, assign some color, uh, create some color shapes and then we will end up with this infographic template here in Adobe Illustrator. So let's start with a new document. Ctrl N or Command N on your Mac and I'm gonna size it with 1920 by 1080. Click create and first of all let's show the grid. Ctrl Quad, Command Quad to show the grid. Ctrl Shift Quad, Command Shift Quad to snap to the grid. Grab the ellipse tool or click L and holding Shift key to draw a perfect circle to construct the proportion and holding alt or option key to draw from the center let's create a circle with the, these parameters 400 pixels width and height so delete the stroke and uh, i'm gonna size down it to 400 pixels so far so good, let's create a duplicate with Ctrl C, Ctrl F or Command C, Command F on your mark. And uh, for this duplicate, I'm gonna set it to 280 pixels. Now guys, let's go to the stroke panel and first of all make sure that align. Uh, you have an option align stroke to center, align stroke to center and then increase the stroke weight of your ellipses up to the point of 60 pixels. So, so far so good. Uh, make sure that you align both of them properly, both into the vertically, uh, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, we have uh, aligned them properly. And now let's grab the gradient panel. If you can find your gradient panel, go to the Windows gradient somewhere here and let's apply the default gradient and then double click on the gradient slider uh, on the gradient stop this time uh, on the black gradient stop and shift the slider to push it to the 20% gray so far so good let's swap fill and stroke I'm gonna apply it to stroke and then on the C stroke alignment align it to the uh, align your gradient across the stroke, third option from this row. Uh, so we have this nice design. We even need to reverse our gradient. Everything is uh, has already set. And uh, we need to grab a scissors tool and slice a half of the circles. Both large and small. Now we can actually shift a half of the circles here. And here you see guys, uh, select, let me show you this. You see guys, select this this uh, lower half of the circle and swap fill and stroke. And do the same with the outer, uh, outer half, so uh, swap fill and stroke. You see? So, uh, the pattern, the colors should match each other and we have some kind of uh, pasta band here, at least. So, this is what we have. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab these three uh, semicircles and continue my design like, just like so. So, you see it here that uh, our gradient doesn't match and uh, in order for them to match, I'm gonna work only with the, with the bottom parts, with these uh, guys. So, first of all, I'm gonna swap fill and stroke here and swap fill and stroke here. So, in order to um, recreate this circle. Now, I'm gonna grab this bottom part and push it to the top with control shift right bracket command shift right bracket then i'm gonna uh, grab this guy and push it to the bottom with control bracket or command shift right bracket just like so now guys i'm gonna select this 
and I'm gonna push it to the bottom here and this on the top just like so so you can see we have a clear pattern here again this um, guy third guy on the top row we should split it with the scissors tool so grab scissors tool and slice it in the middle so to create a quarter of circle you see it here select the right quarter and push it to the top with the control shift right bracket or command shift right bracket on your mark and do the same with these guys as well so you can see and again change the direction of your gradient but i believe i believe we can change the direction of these gradients this time so on top so this is how we walk how we create these shapes so far so good let's also create an ellipsis inside uh, it seems to me very easy task and let's fill this ellipse and let's create a gradient apply it, the gradient to the fill so I'm gonna apply the gradient here just like so and then uh, go to the CMI guy uh, on the gradient advanced options and select something blue okay let's go to the blue uh, I have a darker blue and for the next uh, gradient stop I'm gonna create some light blue and then uh, grab the uh, choose the type and from the uh, type drop down I'm gonna choose radial see it here then walk and tweak my dark blue color uh, make it uh, or you can use uh, HCB I believe it's more straightforward here increase the saturation and decrease the brightness and as well I also want to work with the midpoint and push it toward the light source to introduce more dark you see it here um, so far so good now let's swap our gradient just like so and see what we have again uh, I think I need to push this midpoint to the dark so that uh, this uh, uh, look handsome and now I need to create a new layer for this circle and uh, for this is this layer I'm gonna put it uh, to the bottom uh, again I'm gonna duplicate my uh, designs and then use my color artwork tool uh, to link uh, color harmony and push this to magenta click OK then push them to the let's say reddish click OK and push them to the let's say uh, green something somewhere like here okay the um, colors um, the colors didn't play very well I think I need to uh, create more yellowish kind of so we have uh, two basically we have two cold and two warm colors and maybe we can even switch uh, these two guys uh, to create more uh, logical transition here so uh, now it uh, looks better and uh, I also want to uh, grab all of them and apply an inner shadow and in order to create an inner shadow we need to start with the inner glow so let's go to the effect then stylize and inner glow and with inner glow I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna come up with these values M select the multiply as a blending mode then choose the 303030 as the main color decrease the opacity to 60% uh, increase the blur to 7 pixels and let's say 
what we have now let's see what we have now i think we need to increase the uh, blur value as well as opacity value to around 65 so far so good click ok make sure that you are walking around the edge click ok uh, for now guys let's select all of this uh, grayish uh, uh, connect interconnected circles uh, but before we do this I'm gonna lock all of my uh, colored circles this inside and uh, what we're gonna do next I'm gonna create a new layer and put this layer in between the first and, and the second one here let's duplicate with ctrl C ctrl F our main design, these connected lines, and let's put it on the new layer here, uh, layer below, or in my case, it's layer number three. I'm gonna also log this uh, poster bands, original design, and work with the duplicates. For for duplicates, I'm gonna uh, create a quick shadow, and what I mean by that, guys, we can create a quick shadow from our duplicates is in one simple step so i'm gonna apply a completely different stroke color so let's say very distinct uh, i'm gonna apply a solid stroke color and it should be dark for example 383838 i'm completely satisfied with this um, color uh, now let's go uh, to the blue value so go to the effect and blur and choose the gaussian blur and from this drop down we need to play with the radius so check preview and let's see what we have so it's kind of quickest way to create the shadow and as you can see it also emanates and uh, in into this circle so it's exactly what i want so we can e even delete our actual uh, from the appearance our actual inner glow we don't need them last part of this tutorial is to grab the our design uh, select the whole design uh, place it somewhere in the middle by the way guys if you uh, want to post it somewhere you need to I mean some uh, micro stocks of course you need to make uh, first vector shadows do not rely on the blur and also uh, you need to uh, go to the object uh, path and uh, uh, no expand appearance of your stroke so uh, in order to convert these um, strokes um, uh, with the gradient to the mesh objects and last but not least guys grab the line segment tool click backslash and creates a line from the bottom middle of first uh, circle uh, grab uh, give it a white stroke okay let's this uh, grayish light gray stroke f9 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 click ok and increase the stroke weight to around let's say 20 pixels uh, now let's create a new layer and set this layer behind our shadows uh, this with the blur in my case uh, my layer um, number four is uh, below the layer number three uh, last but not least duplicate these uh, circles or uh, move it just like so and uh, uh, apply a default gradient uh, to this circle so but uh, this circle should uh, to the feel of uh, this circle and now we can go to the work with the fill continue working with the fill uh, go to the gray scale I, I double click to the black color uh, gradient stop then go to this advanced menu and choose the palette gray scale then uh, set the 15 percentage of the gray and we need to arrange uh, 
and we need to arrange uh, this gradient uh, to according to the uh, light source or something like that. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna arrange it from lighter on the top left and darker on the bottom right. Uh, so, so far so good. Let's make a duplicate, Control C, Control F, make it a little bit uh, smaller and then uh, actually I can uh, set this color. Uh, so it looks handsome, um, now I'm gonna place it in the appropriate appropriate uh, layer and red duplicate to my third icon as well. And then of course I need to uh, sample a gradient from this uh, circle. Again a duplicate holding Alt or Option key, then rotate it, uh, holding Shift key, rotate to the 180 degrees, and then position them just like so. Swap your colors, and voila, we have our infographic template. Last but not least, we need to fill in it with the icons, and uh, this is uh, from victeasy.com. So you can go to the victeasy.com, follow in the link in the description and download these icons for absolutely free. Arrange them to my layers. As you can see the size is just right for these icons. Maybe some of them I should resize though. So and this is how you can create this pretty handsome infographic in Adobe Illustrator. So if you have any question, just use the comments of the description, subscribe to my channel, give a thumb up, share with your friends, and do not forget to visit tutorials.net. This is a source of high quality vector tutorials, both Adobe Illustrator and Graphic Designer. Thank you for watching, have a great day.